Welcome to another Six Five Media virtual podcast. I'm Will Townsend, Vice President and Principal Analyst at More Insights and Strategy. I cover networking and security. And joining me today is Vita Mabruco. He's the Global Chief Marketing Officer for NTT Corporation. Vito, welcome to uh, the podcast. Thank you, Will. Great to see you again. Yeah, it's been a while. So we saw each other in Tokyo last year. We're going to get into that in a moment. But I'd like to start first with, with NTT. Sure. Um, it's a company that's very well known, obviously in Japan and Asia, but not as many folks know what the company is all about in the United States. So I thought we could start with you're providing an overview of what NTT is focused on. Sure, no problem. I appreciate the, the opportunity here, Will, to have the, this uh, discussion. So NTT is actually quite a large global technology company that uh, not a lot of people are aware of, but we're probably in the top 10 or 15 largest technology companies in the world. We're almost 100 billion in revenue, depending on exchange rates, with uh, 340,000 employees and uh, almost half of those are external to our uh, headquarter country of Japan. And we deliver services to 190 countries. Now, what people don't realize is we have multiple lines of business all related to technology. Uh, the first and largest one is our mobile operator business where we're serving 90 million customers, uh, including providing not just mobility services, but value add services around finance and entertainment and payments. And then we also have our enterprise IT services business, which is uh, uh, NTT Data. Our mobile operator is called NTT Docomo, and uh, our IT services is NTT Data. They deliver consulting, networking, data center, managed services to Fortune 500 type companies. We also have a local and SMB business delivering technology and services to uh, local enterprises and local small businesses, including uh, fiber to the home. And then we have a number of other businesses that uh, make up almost uh, 10% or 10 billion of our revenue in things like renewable energy, uh, real estate development. Even uh, we have a joint venture with a company called Space Compass, where we're delivering communication services from space. So it's quite a big and uh, diversified global technology company. It really is. And I've gotten to know you and the team over the last couple of years. And like many companies, you use signature events to really generate awareness for what you're doing. Um, Upgrade occurs in San Francisco, and I'm looking forward to attending Upgrade again this year. But I want to talk about um, the R&D Forum. And um, the last two years I've been able to attend in Tokyo, and it is a comprehensive event that uh, highlights all the things that, that NTT is focused on. So I thought it might be helpful for our viewers and listeners to hear from, from you about what, what the overall mission is for the R&D Forum. Yeah, so R&D is a very big part of our uh, culture and commitment. Um, it represents about 30% of our profits, and we've been in, investing in primary research for decades and decades at that level. And it's really part of our DNA from the very beginning. Uh, we're a 150-year-old company whose main focus was to deliver innovation and technology to the public. Now, of course, we're a for-profit in business, but we still believe very much in delivering, not just for today, but for the long term. So the R&D Forum and the Upgrade event, they're really our way of you know, showcasing and delivering that message of R&D uh, to thousands of people, including customers and the community and the media. And it's really intended to show that we're, deliver we're working on a primary research, which is things that don't become real for like five or 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. but we're also developing those into commercial opportunities and businesses uh, for ourselves and for uh, our partners and customers. So the R&D Forum is an annual event. It's a major event that we hold. There's over 90, 90, 95 exhibits, approaching 100 exhibits. And what's unique about it is when you attend this and you saw this, you're actually speaking directly with the researchers. Mm -hmm. This isn't a you know sales and marketing you know kind of just just a uh, you know an, an empty shell. This is the real people showing you the real R and D that we're doing. And I think that's why people keep coming back every year to really get that feel of you know, what is going on, what's new, and what are you guys working on because we're giving you a preview of the future. So we're very proud of this event and and uh, the upgrade event is really taking that. Uh, bringing it to uh, North America so mm -hmm. that even more people 
are exposed to all these great innovations. Yeah, no, it's, you know, I, I always leave educated, you know, the last two years and last year's events theme was uh, I own integral and, and I own is your, your all optical, all photonic network architecture that in my mind has great promise. When you look at the challenges that modern AI applications like agentic and generative AI present, yeah. It's, it's super impressive uh, given the, the latency and throughput that can be supported there. Um, so I'd love to start with just your overall impressions and of what occurred last year with respect to, to ION, because you and I have talked about this, it's a multi-year journey, right, to get there. Yeah, ION is uh, really, uh, you know, where we're putting and have all of our, um, you know, strength and, and capabilities because it comes from the world of fiber optics. And we've been in the world of fiber optics for decades and decades. And in 2019, uh, we invented and pat patented the first um, photonic transistor. Now, what that meant was that we began to think about, you know, networks and computing of the future and what needs to change in order to deal with, even before AI became the hot topic, yeah. we knew there was gonna be an increasing demand on the infrastructure. And so by creating this ability to transition from electronic single signals to photonic signals, we were able to deliver uh, the benefits that you mentioned, which is you know, higher speed, um, much lower latency, like 200 times lower latency, and at a very sustainable, you know, power efficient manner. So these capabilities are now becoming more, more well-known and more perhaps uh, understood as the way to address the upcoming demands that AI is going to put on the, you know, our power usage, but not only the power usage, but the ability to use AI in a way that is really going to, you know, take it to the next level where you do need very low latency, like approaching the speed of light latency. And we've been able to do that and have a roadmap uh, to deliver on uh, photonics based networking and computing of the future. Well, you know, photonics has existed for quite some time and um, it serves as the interconnect when you look at pluggables and that sort of thing. But what I find fascinating about NTT's approach is that you want to embed and your vision is to embed photonics even in the, the device itself, right. Right? right? And so that that eliminates the bottleneck from, from my perspective. So the impact on, on networking is tremendous. Are there any other details that you can share? I know that um, you've put together an ecosystem that's really driving this and it's a who's who of technology companies and maybe right. you could spend some time there. Yeah, I mean, that uh, that's called the Ion Global Forum. And, and before we, we touch on that, because that's a key component to any successful technology which needs you know, global standards and collabor collaboration, but, you know, the thing that we uh, want to emphasize with photonics is that while we are a network company in origin, we're actually a technology company today that is delivering value as, for example, the third largest data center provider in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, you know, one of the top five IT services companies in the world. So the ION goal and roadmap includes, like you said, both the networking but also the data center where all the talk is these days about right. what's going to happen to the data center. And we have a four phase approach for ION. Uh, the first one we've delivered on, which is the all photonics network. And that allows us to connect end to end using uh, photonics. And really it takes away all the lags and the jitters and the, the slowness of the existing internet infrastructure and allows point to point photonics based networking. Now what that does is it, it changes the model around for example, disaster recovery or uh, robotics control. And in fact, one example of how we've proven how important this is, is we were able to connect both Taiwan and Japan uh, through a 3000 kilometer connection. And we got the latency down to 17 milliseconds, which is approaching the speed of light. And what that means is for example, financial services, now you have an ability to recover almost at the speed of light using an ION based backbone. But where this really starts to impact is in the data center. And so ION2 is where we're connecting boards within computers in a data center. And you know, if you think of networking, it's really just moving data. And now by moving data with photonics instead of electronics, 
again, you achieve that same capability that I just talked about in the network, but mm -hmm. now in the computer. And by yeah. doing a board to board, you take out heat, you increase speed. And the next step is to do it from what we call chip to chip or XPU or C, you know, CPU, GPU to GPU. And then the fourth uh, phase is going to be actually within the chip. So all of these combined really bring to the photonics and fiber optics that we all knew to a new level. Uh, and we are doing this in partnership with the industry. So we decided early on that we would, and we believe that it's more important that we have a global collaborative standards approach, which will increase the pie for everyone. Mm -hmm. And yes, we may have a smaller piece of that, but it'll be a bigger pie for all of us. Yeah. And without that kind of collaboration, it won't work. Now, who's, who's, who are we talking about? You said 150, like Microsoft, Google, uh, Cisco, Ericsson, Nokia. Dell uh, Technologies, yeah. yeah. All it's the impressive. big names are there, yeah. Yeah, you know, and it's a heavy lift, you know. I mean, the vision is, it, it's audacious, right? But it takes a village, you know, to, to use yeah. that terminology. Yeah. And the company continues to focus in other areas of well of practical research. And, you know, NTT Research, based in Sunnyvale, is doing some amazing things with digital twin cardiovascular mm -hmm. systems and, and that sort of thing. So I was hoping that you could share with our audience some of the uh, additional practical research that's going on beyond what you're doing with Docomo and, and mobile networks and in the photonics networking with uh, ION. Yeah, I mean, we've always been a big believer in R&D that contributes, you know, back to society and back to the well-being of people and health and healthcare is a very important one. And you mentioned the biodigital twin and the biodigital heart that the folks in uh, as, um, Sunnyvale are working on. There's also a significant amount of investment in R&D in the, the Tokyo labs. Uh, for example, a non-invasive glucose sensor for measuring blood sugar. Uh, that would be an amazing revolution for those mm -hmm. who are dealing with that issue and a major breakthrough. Uh, also, for example, body sensors for people who are paralyzed or suffer from ALS. That's another way of delivering on health. But we think of it even bigger than that. For example, agriculture uh, is a very challenging area these days that is not getting a lot of attention from a technology point of view. So we're developing new crop breeding technologies and uh, more ways to address health and, and well-being in the agricultural world. Um, the one that uh, uh, really uh, got my attention was also this area. I don't know if you saw while you were there. It was a an optical cryptographic circuit. And, you know, we're challenged, as you know, with cybersecurity these days. And again, the right. folks in, in Silicon Valley are working on that. But this optical cryptographic circuit is already fairly small. You needed a microscope to see it. But we are looking at how we can continue to miniaturize that to take it all the way down to the cell phone and to the personal device, because mm -hmm. we're going to be challenged with cybersecurity, especially yeah. with quantum computing coming. So we, we really look at the whole, you know, I guess, spectrum of how we invest in technologies that matter for people today and in the future. I'm glad you touched on security, Vito, because it's an important aspect of, of networking, securing AI models and, and I yeah. do recall um, spending time with the team uh, and learning more about what you're doing with that piece of silicon. I've written about root of trust and secure enclaves and leveraging silicon is just another way to provide a, an extra layer uh, of security beyond you know, the various point solutions that, that exist today. Yeah. And, uh, and it, it's impressive what NTT is, is doing from a research perspective in, in that regard. But, as we wrap our conversation, it, I, I want to touch a little bit on sustainability, something that you mentioned earlier during our conversations. And I think one of the big concerns around um, today's IT infrastructure is power consumption. Yeah. And certainly, I think generative AI has put this at the forefront. There are lots of concerns around you know, silicon that runs at very high power envelopes. And so I'm wondering if you can spend a little bit of time talking about how uh, ION and the R&D Forum and, and Upgrade all come together to address this issue and this concern around sustainable uh, IT infrastructure. Yeah, sustainability to us has been, um, again, a 150-year-old company from day one. 
And uh, I know that everyone talks about it now as something that we should all care about. But for us, it's, you know, it's, it's, we were born with sustainability in our, in our culture. Yeah. And so what that means is that when we are developing future technologies, we're always thinking about sustainability. And we think of sustainability in three ways. Uh, of course, there's green sustainability. There's uh, the well-being part of sustainability. And there's the prosperity. Now, on the green side, to answer your question around AI, we really started to understand that current infrastructure couldn't withstand and couldn't stand the, the needs of the future. And so that's where the invention of the photonics electronics conversion came together, mm -hmm. where we can start to address the net zero goals. And in order to kind of put our money where our mouth is, we bet, we bet our own net zero plan on three things. One is around renewable energy. So we actually have a renewable energy company that we own and build and deliver renewable energy to our own business. That covers 45% of our goal. But the second largest component is using photonics technologies. And that covers another 45%. Because, well, let's face it, we're not going to get to net zero just recycling. No. It's not going to be <laughs> It's not realistic. <laughs> no. So we bet on photonics. And that's where I think if we can build photonics networks, Photonics computing with the industry. It's not the only answer. Let's yeah. not get, you know, fool ourselves, but sure. it is a big part of it. And of course, circular economy is, is important too. That's 10%. So that's okay. our net zero uh, methodology. But it also means well being, as I talked about, healthcare, how we can deliver more benefits to, to society and to communities. And the third one is prosperity, making technology more ubiquitous, more accessible, especially AI as AI becomes more prevalent, as you know, around the world. So we believe in those three things and we'll continue to invest with those always in mind. I love the fact that you mentioned the company has been focused on sustainability since day one. Um, it's such an important aspect. A lot of companies claim tech for good because it's sort of, it's sort of in vogue right now. But I think when you look at the history of NTT and then you look at the practical research that's going on and, and what you're doing, yeah. uh, it really puts your money where your mouth is from, from my perspective. And it's, it's, it's quite, uh, it's quite exciting. So, well, Vito, um, thanks for uh, just a very, you know, compelling conversation. I, I want to let our viewers and listeners know that I will be publishing a more insights and strategy research note that uh, covers a lot of what Vito and I talked about today, as well as it'll go deeper into uh, some of my big takeaways from the R&D forum from last year. But with that, Vito, thanks again for your time. It's been a great conversation. Thank you, Will. Really enjoyed it. Thank you.